Welcome to this YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to talk about top 10 facts about Amir Kabir. So before starting this video, please like this video and subscribe to this channel for our future updates. Mirza Taki Khan Amir e Kabir Mirza Taki Khan Amir e Kabir CA 1806-1852 was the greatest prime minister of the Qajar dynasty. In just three years he accomplished more than the combined efforts of the other chief ministers of the dynasty and laid the foundations of modernization in Iran. He is also known by the titles of Atabak and Amiri e Nezam was chief minister to Nasser al-Din Shah Qajar, Shah of Persia, for the first three years of his reign. He is widely considered to be Iran's first reformer, a modernizer who was unjustly struck down as he attempted to bring gradual reform to Iran. As the prime minister, he also ordered the killing of many Babas and the execution of the founder of the movement, the Bab. In the last years of his life he was exiled to Finn Garden in Kashan and was murdered by command of Nasser al-Din Shah Qajar on January 10, 1852. Number 10, Karbala-e Muhammad Qurban, the father of Taki, Amir e Kabir, was a cook, and later a steward in the household of Karem Makam, who later became the chief minister of Muhammad Shah. It is said that when the tutor came to teach the children of Karem Makam, the boy Taki, in his eagerness to learn, would try to listen from behind the closed door of the private classroom. When Karem Makam heard of this, he allowed the boy to become a regular member of the class. Later Taki was employed as one of the secretaries, and because of his genius and capacity for work he was given positions of responsibility. He became known as Mirza, secretary, Taki Khan Farahani, denoting his birthplace. Number 9, when the head of a Russian mission to Iran was murdered in 1829, the distraught Fath Ali Shah, fearing war, sent his grandson Khosrow Mirza to St. Petersburg. Mirza Taki Khan, Amir e Kabir, went as the prince's secretary and had an opportunity to observe the life and institutions of Russia. Ten years later he accompanied young Nasser al-Din, the crown prince, to Russia. At this time Mirza Taki Khan was the chief secretary and tutor of the prince, with the title of Amir e Nezam, commander of the army. He impressed the Tsar with his knowledge of Russian, and arranged to see schools, factories, hospitals, and other establishments in the country. Number 8, in 1842 Taki Khan, Amir-e-Kabir, headed the Persian delegation to the Erzurum Conference, for the settlement of the Irano-Turkish border dispute. His performance there was so outstanding that the British representative, Robert Curzon, wrote that Mirza Taki Khan was, beyond all comparison, the most interesting person among the commissioners of Turkey, Persia, Russia, and Great Britain who were there assembled at Erzurum. This was the period of Tanzimat reforms in the Ottoman Empire, and the significance of these reforms did not escape the discerning eyes of the young commander. Number 7, in 1848, when Nasser al-Din became Shah of Iran, he chose Mirza Taki Khan Amir e Nezam. As his chief minister, with the appropriate title of Atabak e Azam. Mirza Taki Khan, however, preferred to use his old and more humble title. The people gradually changed the title to Amir e Kabir, Great Commander. He was now in a position to implement the reforms which, he must have been planning in his mind for a long time. Number 6, this indefatigable worker began at once, and no aspect of the life of the country escaped his scrutiny. Amir e Kabir built factories, facilitated commerce, established the first modern institution of learning, employed teachers and technicians from Europe, inaugurated a modern postal system, set up a translation bureau and a modern press, founded the first newspaper, reorganized the judicial system, did away with the sale of office, and prevented the clergy from interfering with the affairs of government. Number 5, Amir Kabir returned to Tabriz in 1263-1847. A year later, while retaining the post and title of Vizier-e-Nezam, he was appointed Lala Bashi, or chief tutor to the crown prince Nasser al-Din, who was still only 15 years of age. Soon after, in Shawwal, 1264, September, 1848, Muhammad Shah died, and Nasser al-Din had to proceed to Tehran and assume the throne. But his minister, Mirza Fathala Nazir al-Mulk al-Abadi, was unable to procure the necessary funds, so Nasser al-Din had recourse to Amir Kabir, who made the necessary arrangements. Nasser al-Din's confidence in Amir Kabir increased, and shortly after leaving Tabriz, he awarded him the rank of Amir e Nezam, with full responsibility for the whole Iranian army. After arriving in Tehran, he also appointed him chief minister, Shaks e Aval e Iran, with the supplementary titles of Amir e Kabir and Atabak al Qada, 1264, October, 1848. 
the former title came to be his common designation, the latter, used for the first time, since the Saljuk period, referred to the tutorial relationship between the minister, and his young master his appointment, as the chief minister aroused resentment, particularly the queen mother, and other princes, who resented Amir Kabir's reduction of their spending and allowances. The intrigues of his opponents resulted in a mutiny of, a company of Azerbaijani troops garrisoned in Tehran, but with the cooperation of Mirza Abu Qasim Imam of Friday Prayer in Tehran, who ordered the merchants of Tehran to close the bazaar and arm themselves, the mutiny was soon quelled, and Amir Kabir resumed his duties. More severe disorder prevailed in a number of provincial cities, especially Mashhad. Toward the end of the reign of Muhammad Shah, Hamza Mirza Heshmat al Dole was appointed governor of Khorasan, but he found his authority disputed by Hassan Khan Salah, who, with the help of some local chieftains, had rebelled against the central government, 1262-1846. Hamza Mirza abandoned Mashhad to Hassan Khan and fled to Herat. Amir Kabir sent two armies against Hassan Khan, the second of which, commanded by Sultan Murad Mirza, defeated his forces and captured him. Amir Kabir had him executed, 1266-1850, together with one of his sons and one of his brothers, a punishment of unprecedented severity for such provincial resistance to central authority, and a clear sign of Amir Kabir's intention to assert the prerogatives of the state. These and many other activities aroused the anger of courtiers, landlords and clergy, whose sources of income and power were threatened by the reforms. His greatest enemy was his own mother-in-law, the Queen Mother. In 1851 the Shah very reluctantly dismissed him and sent him to Kashan. A few months later the Queen Mother tricked her son into signing Amir e Kabir's death warrant and hurried executioners to Kashan. They found him in the bathhouse and killed him by opening his veins. Number 4, during his tenure, Amir Kabir participated in many missions abroad. He spent almost four years in Erzurum, part of a commission to delineate the Ottoman-Iranian frontier. He resisted attempts to exclude Mahamare, present-day Khorramshah, from Iranian sovereignty and to make Iran pay compensation for its military incursions into the area of Soleimaniye. In this, he acted independently of the central government in Tehran which not only failed to formulate a consistent policy vis-a-vis -vis the Ottomans but also opposed most of Amir Kabir's initiatives. Although a form of treaty was concluded between Iran and the Ottoman state, the borders had still not been delineated when the Crimean War erupted and the British and Russian mediators, now at war with one another, withdrew. Amir Kabir nonetheless acquired first-hand knowledge of the procedures of international diplomacy and of the aims and policies of Britain and Russia with respect to Iran. This helped him in the elaboration of his own distinct policies toward the two powers, when he became chief minister. Number three, moreover, his years in Erzurum fell during the Ottoman military, and administrative reforms known as the Tanzimat. Some awareness of these reached Amir Kabir in Erzurum, and inspired in him at least one aspect of his policy, the elimination of clerical influence upon affairs of state. When explaining to the British consul at Tabriz in 1265-1849 his own determination, to make the authority of the state paramount he said, the Ottoman government was able to begin reviving its power only, after breaking the power of the mullahs. Number 2, Amir Kabir returned to Tabriz in 1263-1847. A year later, while retaining the post and title of Vizier-e-Nezam, he was appointed Lala Bashi, or chief tutor to the crown prince Nasser al-Din, who was still only 15 years of age. Soon after, in Shawwal, 1264, September, 1848, Muhammad Shah died, and Nasser al-Din had to proceed to Tehran and assume the throne. But his minister, Mirza Fathala Nazir al-Mulk al-Abadi, was unable to procure the necessary funds, so Nasser al-Din had recourse to Amir Kabir, who made the necessary arrangements. Nasser al-Din's confidence in Amir Kabir increased, and shortly after leaving Tabriz, he awarded him the rank of Amir e Nezam, with full responsibility for the whole Iranian army. After arriving in Tehran, he also appointed him chief minister, Shaks e Aval e Iran, with the supplementary titles of Amir e Kabir and Atabak al Qada, 1264, October, 1848. The former title came to be his common designation. The latter, used for the first time since the Saljuk period, referred to the tutorial relationship between the minister and his young master. Number 1, among the various measures enacted by Amir Kabir, the foundation of the Darolfanan, in Tehran was possibly the most lasting in its effects. Decades later, many parts of this establishment were turned into the University of Tehran, with the remaining becoming Darolfanan Secondary School. 
The initial purpose of the institution was to train officers and civil servants to pursue the regeneration of the state that Amir Kabir had begun, but as the first educational institution giving instruction in modern learning, it had far wider impact. Among the subjects taught were medicine, surgery, pharmacology, natural history, mathematics, geology and natural science. The instructors were for the most part Austrians, recruited in Vienna by Daoud Khan, an Assyrian who had become acquainted with Amir Kabir, during the work of the Ottoman-Iranian Border Commission. By the time the instructors arrived in Tehran in Moharram, 1268, November, 1851, Amir Kabir had already been dismissed, and it fell to Daoud Khan to receive them. What do you think of our list? Which of the facts about Amir Kabir shocked you the most? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from me again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.